I think the biggest things that came out of the PFS were it really confirmed in our mind that Spring Pole is one of the few really developable big strategic projects left in Canada. Well, hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by First Mining Gold CEO and Director, Dan Wilton. Uh, Dan, great to see you today, joining us from Vancouver. Uh, Leo, great to see you too. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Um, now, I'd like to start things off. You, last month, uh, you released a successful uh, pre-feasibility study uh, for your spring pole project in Ontario. Um, tell us a little bit about some of, the, some of the highlights of that PFS. Yeah, listen, I think the biggest things that came out of the PFS were it really confirmed in our mind that spring pole is one of the few really developable big strategic projects left in Canada. This is, you know, a uh, a project that uh, we declared 3.8 million ounces of gold in reserve uh, through the PFS. Uh, it's capable of producing in excess of 300,000 ounces per year mm. in the bulk of its mine life and in the, um, in the lowest quartile, all in sustaining costs in the cost curve. So from those perspectives alone and in a tier one jurisdiction, I think it's hard to find a, a better jurisdiction than Ontario. Uh, with a track record for permitting sizable projects. They've permitted four big open pit mines in the last five years. Um, yeah, it showed to be a really big, robust, developable project that we're now taking through the environmental assessment process and ultimately toward that construction decision. Mm. You, me you mentioned that it, that it had a pretty low all-in sustaining costs. What, what sort of figure are you talking about? Uh, well, in the first uh, nine years of the mine life, in the core part of the mine life, you're talking all in sustaining costs below $600 an ounce mm. for a okay, sizable project. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Um, we scoped the upfront capital at uh, about 720 million US, which was actually down about $80 million from how we'd scoped it in a PEA for a variety of reasons. We'd scoped the project a bit smaller, down to 30,000 tons a day from 36,000. But um, made a couple of other really important changes, the biggest one of which was moving to um, a filtered tailings and waste rock co-disposal dry stack tailings facility and eliminating the tailings dam, which I mm. think really uh, with that facility being lined um, makes for what we think is a really environmentally robust solution to take through permitting. Mm, absolutely. And what, what gold price did you use for your, for your calculations? Uh, for the economics, we used sixteen hundred dollar gold as a base mm -hmm. case, uh, but the reserves are run at thirteen fifty. So quite conservative in the way that we've actually looked at approaching the reserves. But just basically used a long term consensus gold price. At that consensus gold price, uh, the project has an NPV uh, of nine hundred ninety five million US uh, after tax. So we were really scraping to try and find that last five million. So we can say it was a billion dollar NPV, but um, no, we think it shows very, very strong leverage to gold price increases. Um, you know, any increase up to spot or where we were, you know, in the middle of last year, you start seeing significant increases in your NPV from there. Mm. And you mentioned you've done some work to uh, sort of uh, improve the uh, sort of eco uh, environmental uh, status of the project with the with the with the tailings uh, treatment. Um, and you and you've got the the uh, economic uh, environmental impact assessment uh, coming up soon. You're working on that at the moment. We are. Yeah. The, the main focus for our team this year is getting the uh, environmental assessment document collated and mm. submitted, aiming to submit that by the end of the year. That starts. Uh, really the formal part of the of the EA process in Ontario, and we're doing it both provincially, federally, which is an 18 to 24 month process from there. Um, and that's, you know, this is a really important time for us over the course of this year as we continue to scope this project. I think we've done a lot of trade-offs through the pre-feasibility study. We've got some value adding work that we're doing now, more metallurgical work. We think we can improve recoveries, uh, improve uh, further the robustness of the project. But this is a really important time where we're also in dialogue with our Indigenous communities about their views, their concerns, and really understanding what's the project that um, they would like to see scoped and go through the EA process. So it's a, it's a really important year. Mm. And you, you've, you've added some local expertise to your, your environmental and community relations team. We have, have, yeah. Yeah, no, we're delighted to have brought on Steve Lines uh, onto our team in December. And Steve 
joined us from uh, the Greenstone Gold Mine Project, which uh, or JV, which had the Hard Rock Project in Ontario, which really is the closest comparable in terms of size and scale to Springpole. And Steve and his team uh, really have spent the last six and a half years taking that project from pre-project description in permitting all the way through to construction permits. So they've got the relationships with the regulators. Um, they really, we've, we've put together really a top class team between Steve and his team and the team at Wood Engineering who we brought on. They have permitted literally every large open pit mine in Ontario in the last 20 years. So it's a great team that's come together and they've come together because they believe in the project. They believe that this is something that we're going to be able to move forward. So it's a, it's a great amount of energy and enthusiasm, but more importantly, capability and understanding of this process uh, to be able to guide us through it. So we're, we're delighted. Absolutely. And while, while your, your main focus is on Springpole, you also have a num number of other projects in your portfolio. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's been going on at some of your other projects in Ontario, uh, Cameron and Pickle Crow. Yeah, so Cameron, we've recently consolidated the land package there. We had a, an interesting uh, piece in the middle of our land package that that's a very good resource on it that we acquired in December. So we're right now in consultation with our communities around exploration agreements, but would like to get uh, exploration work undergoing at Cameron uh, this summer and hopefully get drills turning because it's there's a lot that I think we can understand and grow on that resource. Pickle Crow, our partnership with Ateco, uh, it's going fantastically. Ateco is in the middle of a 45,000 meter drill program and they've already you know had some of the best high grade drill results in Canada <laughs> over the course of the last few months. So uh, we're expecting any day now they're going to hit their 5 million earn in threshold for the first, uh, the first stage earn in, which will make us even larger shareholders of Ateco. Uh, and importantly, you know, I think they'll be through in 2021, the second 5 million spend, which will take them up to 80% ownership, but we retain a 20% interest in the project carried through to a construction decision. So that's a, it's a pretty valuable, um, a pretty valuable uh, investment for us. And we're excited to see that the team's doing great fundamental geological work and and having great uh great uh, success at discovery so we're very mm -hmm. happy about that um and in terms of you know how you're going to sort of pay for all this activity um how's your sort of cash position uh going and how's how, how has fundraising gone over the past sort of uh, the past year yeah listen cash position's never been stronger for the company we're sitting today between cash and marketable securities uh i think in excess of 50 million dollars so mm -hmm. we think we've got all of the financial capability that we need to see this project, all, see Springpole all the way through this permitting process and still have some financial capability to start looking at uh, more exploration at Springpole to start better understanding some of the other assets in the portfolio. But we still have strategic investments, our, our ownership of Treasury Metals, which is developing the Goliath uh, Gold Complex, just put out a really interesting PEA a couple of weeks ago. We own 40% of Treasury. Uh, and so that's, you know, we, we've got a number of different investments that I think, you know, if you look at our strategic investments in our cash position, it's almost $200 million worth of value. We think that gives us a really strong financial footing to see us all the way through, um, you know, and, and up to that construction decision at Springfield. Mm. I mean, for those of our, uh, our viewers who, who don't know First Mining Gold, give us a, just a, a quick little background on the company. You, you linked to some other other uh, other big companies that people might have, might know. Yeah, so uh, First Mining was uh, founded by Keith Newmeyer, who's the CEO of First Majestic Silver, um, and uh, Keith's a well-known uh, person in the mining industry and a great chair of our company. Um, we you know we benefit a lot from Keith's involvement. Um, and a lot of our shareholders uh, came from followers of Keith. So we're, we're, uh, we're delighted with that. But Keith in 2015, which we will remember as a terrible time in the financing markets for mining projects, uh, Keith and some like-minded folks decided they were going to buy every good project they could get their hands on that people had given up. So they bought eight, eight companies or projects in 12 months and put together what you know, we think is one of the best gold development portfolios in the sector. Um, and I joined in early 2019 um, because I saw really the value of this portfolio not being recognized. So we've made a few important moves over the last 
uh, 18 months, really over the last 12 months, that have radically changed the uh, nature of this investment. So mm. we've added to the team, we've solidified the treasury. I think we're very, very credibly moving a world-class project through the permitting process. And ultimately, you know, this project, which would be one of the biggest undeveloped gold projects in Canada, is still getting, you know, less than $100 million of value in our market cap today. Whereas our peers that, you know, that should be multiples of this value. So uh, I think we just, we keep on the path. We continue de-risking. I think we continue to improve our projects, start doing some exploration around some of our projects. And, uh, and yeah, I think the future is very bright. Hmm. So in terms of, you know, what people should be looking out for in 2021, what are the sort of key milestones you're hoping to hit? Yeah, key milestones on Springpole. Uh, it's some optimization work. We'll have some exploration drilling and ultimately targeted on submitting that environmental assessment document at the end of 2021. Um, that's going to keep our team very busy as we move forward with that. But then on uh, Pickle Crow, we're going to have uh, the stage one and I think probably the stage two earn in this year. Uh, on treasury metals, you've had a PEA come out and that's you know, now rolling into PFS, ongoing drill results coming from the Goliath Gold Complex. You're going to start drilling at, uh, at um, Cameron as well and start delineating more resource in addition to the million ounces we have there already. So it's going to be a busy year. We got lots of catalysts coming, but uh, you know, really fundamentally anchored by what we think is a world-class project that, uh, that you know, people, I think, are going to start believing that we're moving forward here. So. Well, today. thank you very much uh, for that for that update. Uh, lots of lots of exciting things ahead, uh, I think, for the company there. Um, look forward to hearing all about it as things develop. But thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Dan Wilton. Thank you, Liam.